Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection, uh, episode number seven. I'm going to pretend it's seven. Mm. And uh, today I'm sketching. And uh, some of you might be surprised that I haven't really sketched any garments until now, episode seven. And yeah, if you watch my fashion design process tutorial series, then you know already that I believe the best way to design is to gather your inspiration, your colors, and your fabrics before you start sketching actual shapes and design details. Okay? Because that is also how you design in the fashion industry. Okay? So, you know, when you have a design team, you want, like, let's pretend you're the creative director or the design director or whatever the role is titled and you have a team first you have to get everyone on the same page so you share with them your inspiration your ideas on what you think the future trends are going to be you know you share images so that y'all are on you know are thinking about the same things as you design you pull together color story based on what you think are going to be the the on trend colors co going forward and with the concept the inspiration the overall theme and the color story in mind you shop for fabrics whether you go to fabric sales rep uh, offices or you ask them to bring their headers to your office and your team meets with everyone and you go and you have several meetings with depending on uh, like how wide of a range of fabrics that you use you know some companies like I used to work at a company where it was 90% leather jackets so we worked with a lot of leather guys and then we did a little business uh, we did a lot of business with lining lining guys guys who did lining a lot of round bembergs and we did some business with wools and linens and things but it was really a lot of leather and then of course there are companies that do you know the full collection tops bottoms jackets etc and so you have to get all those different fabrics and you know, a lot of mills and distributors, they have a specialty. So I seriously doubt you'll be able to get all your fabrics from one mill or distributor unless you have a very narrow, small, focused collection or company, right? So getting everyone on board with the concept, getting everyone on board with the color and having that color story in mind when you're looking for fabrics, pulling fabrics. And then uh, someone asked me a really good question, like, how do you, like, if you start designing after picking fabrics, like, how do you know how much to order? Or I forget exactly how they worded it, but it's kind of like chicken or the egg. Like, how do you order fabrics? How do you know how much to order, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, you know, typically you get swatches or headers from the design company. If you're on your own, you know, you can just get them at the store. You know, you can go to stores, you can go to jobbers and ask if they will cut swatches. Some places will swatch them for free like up to five swatches or something. Uh, some will, get, you know, charge you. Uh, don't go around sneaking. Um, <laughs> I have funny stories of getting kicked out of fabric stores for sneaking swatches. <laughs> I know I'm such a rebel. Uh, anyway, so you're designing off the swatches and then as you're getting more organized, like I'm definitely doing this many bodies in this fabric and this many bodies in that fabric, and you're getting a gist, right? It's like, oh, this jacket's going to take about two yards and this jacket's going to, you know, you get a gist for your yield and then you put in your sample orders okay? and you put in your sample orders as you're designing, finalizing designs, working with the pattern maker so that by the time 
you're ready to cut the fabric and get it sewn, your sample yardage will have arrived to the office. That's your ideal scenario. Does everything work ideally? Of course not. <laughs> it's the real world. But that's that's kind of the gist. So you guys kind of get that, uh, get an idea, get a feel for things. And when I'm designing, I always have my fabrics around with me. As you can see on screen, I have all the, the headers that I chose in the last week's video. And yeah, I haven't finalized anything. And I know that I still have a couple of binders to go through, but I really felt like sketching today. So I have my fabrics. Uh, I have my markers. I haven't, you know, when I first started sketching, I didn't decided if I wanted to start playing with colors yet. And I'm just using a black fine liner and sketching on these really uh, lightly printed crooked figures. Okay. I forget which video I showed this design trick. What I used to do a lot, or what we used to do in college, was we used to print out our crooked figures, our fashion figure templates, very, very, very lightly on photocopy paper, ditto paper, and then just draw right on top. And then the the template is drawn faintly enough that if you just draw a marker on top, you can't really see the body underneath. But this is a little shortcut that saves time when you're just whipping out like fast idea sketches and you're not overly worried about how the rendering is looking. So this is how I design. I have all, you know, I have my sketchbook with my inspiration pages and my collages and, you know, all the little scribbles of notes I've taken and my customer collage. Everything is all in one place. That's why I love having just like one big sketchbook with all my notes in it. Hard to lose stuff. And, you know, I am the classic absent-minded professor. And I have all my swatches around. So even though I haven't finalized my swatches, I know that I'm looking at some linens some medium weight linens, wovens, nothing too stretchy or drapey. I'm looking at some chambray's and I'm playing with some really firm, stable ribnet trim. Uh, the first few sketches I was using that kind of inserted in places to do like a soft gather, things like that. So even though I don't have the exact fabric, I know what fabrics or basically what fabrics I'm using as I'm designing. I know last week I said that I was gonna do uh, a video on, uh, whatchamacallit, like a basic backwards cost sheet so that we can you can figure out, you know, what price fabrics you can afford to uh, offer the price bracket, you know, the ultimate price bracket for your customers. I will get to that. I will, okay, I have not forget, forgotten, because that is an important step and we do need to address that. So yeah, for more information on fashion design process, I recommend you go watch the tutorials. This series, I'd like to re reiterate, are not tutorials. This is me designing on my own and you know, I'm just someone who can't help but teach and explain. So I am, but it's not like a well-organized uh, lesson. Okay, for that, go watch the Fashion Design Process playlist. So things that I am considering while I'm designing. So remember, I wanted this to be unisex, so I'm designing on both male and female body croquis. And I'm keeping the shapes really simple and straightforward. I would love to say that, you know, men and women both feel the freedom to wear whatever the hell they want, but we're not quite there yet, okay? I love pushing the boundaries of what each gender can wear, but we're not quite there yet. And, you know, if I really want men to consider skirts and dresses, the shape of things has to be pretty straightforward, even for the most adventurous of dressers. And also, you know, even for people who might be more adventurous about wearing skirts and dresses, you know, it's 
to keep things kind of wearable, you have to, you know, you can have like a really cool shape, but like a simple fabric, or you can have really complex textures and kind of get interesting within the silhouette, but keep the shape simple. Okay. If you have both, you can start getting either you're not doing it quite right and you get a bit costumey or you're doing it well and it becomes very avant-garde. And I had mentioned before that I do want to keep this, you know, interesting pushing boundaries, but still ultimately wearable, which is different from commercial. Okay? Commercial is mass market. Wearable is, you know, something you people can feel comfortable wearing without being too much like standing out without sticking out. Okay, there's the difference there. So I'm keeping the shapes pretty simple and straightforward. I'm really liking longer uh, lengths right now, like just below the knee, down to maxi, somewhere around in there. And I'm playing with, uh, y'all know I'm obsessed with pockets. And so for this one, like <laughs> what I'm sketching right now, I have pockets on top of pockets on top of pockets, which is inspired by the the square gold platelets in that gem stacked and scattered on top of each other. And you see how that kind of translates. So, and then I'm playing with the scale of pockets and the big patches, which is an inspiration from the Boro, but these are pockets, and so they're not quite the same as Boro. And then I'm doing the big stitching, and that's a, you know, you've, we've all seen that in sportswear before, where, uh, you know, the pocket bag might be in the garment and not seen, but there's top stitching on the outside to show where the pocket bag is. And I'm playing with that, maybe large uh, sachiko stitching, or uh, playing with different shapes of that so that it, it's not exactly always the same square pocket bag. I might be playing with, you know, contrast fabrics for the welt pocket, the welts. Uh, I'm playing with Remember how I <laughs> I was really into making aprons a thing? And so I'm playing with the idea of aprons as part of the garment, possibly separating, you know, all these things, you know, all the things that I, all these things are not new. Okay, I mentioned them in previous videos, you know, I'm still following all the umbrella concepts but now they're getting solidified and I'm using all the inspiration references and collages before to create my shapes and kind of general uh, designs. This is a sketching brainstorm session, which means, you know, Brainstorming means you're just throwing it all down on paper. You're not really editing in terms of what you think is a good idea or a bad idea. You're just throwing it all down there and then seeing later what sticks. Because sometimes bad ideas can be inspiration for far better ideas. So I'm just throwing everything down on paper. You know, I'm using some of these shapes that I drew in this previous collage to help me create different shapes. And right now they're just lines. And so as I'm designing and as I'm placing the lines, I'm also thinking about what exactly those lines are going to be. It's not enough to just have cool shapes and have cool lines because our ultimate goal is clothes. Our goal is not pretty pictures. And so while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, okay, Let's see here. We could turn these black lines into piping. Maybe we'll want something bolder and we'll turn them into binding. Uh, maybe it'll be like a digital print, a placed print. Maybe we do a custom fabric where we have a stripe that is wavy. Um, we could do embroidery. We could do different kinds of decorative stitching that aren't as like, you know, satin fill as embroidery. 
Uh, we could do some kind of faggoting, which is when you have two panels next to each other with a gap in between them and stitching, uh, connecting the two pieces together while still leaving a gap. And that's a cool option. And now I'm taking the inspiration of those two those pieces of electric tape that I had and turning them into pocket welts. So we could do that. Okay. And so it I'm just constantly writing notes on what would be cool. Okay. And so right now I'm like, oh, watercolor splotches, but not literally, because I have the watercolor splotches in my collage, but I'm not gonna sit there and hand paint mass production. Remember, I was talking about how I'm designing as if I'm going to produce these. And since I'm not going to sit there and hand paint all of these, how am I going to get this effect or a similar effect, but in a mass producible way? So I have to think about that as well. So right now, I'm just slapping down some ideas, mostly concentrating on larger shapes. You know, as I design, I start small and I get bigger. As in, right now, my figures are about eight inches tall. And so my sketches are small, so it's all broad strokes. And then as I pull concepts that I like, I pull the, I'm going to pull designs later that I like. I'm going to put them on bigger figures so then I can uh, put in more details. Okay. And, and then as I'm developing and I'm working with fabrics and doing, you know, kind of samples on different techniques, I'll be doing flats. And then those flats are going to be even bigger than the clothes on the figures. And then if I really need to get into the details of something, then I'll have like bigger drawings of close up bits of the design. Okay. Because, you know, <sighs> you have to think about how these things are going to look life size. So Sometimes when something looks overcrowded in a small form like this, won't look very overcrowded on a life-size garment. So those are the kinds of things you have to think about. Sometimes, yeah, you only want just like the one element, like the first four sketches I did in the very beginning where it was just linen shift dresses with like a simple uh, rib knit trim emphasizing, you know, certain parts. So, yeah. I'm just sketching. This is not going to be just one video. I'm going to have several videos of sketching, lots and lots and lots of sketching. Because the first ideas are never your best ideas, like, ever. It's like so rare. It's like 0.01% of the time your first ideas are your best ideas. So I'm just going to be sketching, 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 and I'm going to make you watch me. I mean... <laughs> That's why you're here, right? <laughs> All right. So uh, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or entertaining. And as usual, leave your questions below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, share with your friends all of my sketching shenanigans. And yeah go design some cool stuff you know play around and some of you may thinking zoe you're just sketching without taking a break it's like you're just chugging along and it's like yeah i have so much background work done that i don't have to think about it i have so much inspiration and fabric and colors and textures and i have so much stuff already kind of done that the sketching part is now just kind of merging all those things that I've already been working on. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. Later, I'm going to glue these into my sketchbook. So once again, everything is staying in one place. I'm going to keep developing all those good things. I hope you will uh, continue the design journey 
with me and I will see you in the next video.